how I stay motivated. How do I stay motivated? Hmm, good question. I stay motivated. So I got a question the other day. Someone said in Southern California, doing right, I just don't feel like riding my bike. I'm in SoCal, sunny California. Got a great place to ride a nice bike. Just not feeling the mojo. That's normal. That's normal. Like today, um, if I want to give a shout as well to DuranRider.com. That's my website. I've got a cycling book called Duran Rider's Land Body Bible. In that, I share so many tips that have helped me so much over the last 23 years of racing and training and coaching others and things I've learned. And I continue to update that ebook as well. Instant download, DuranRider.com. If you want to support me, that's the best way. But also, you're also supporting yourself. Right? I'm not here just to ask for handouts. I'm here to you know, give you the very, very best information that is out there in terms of you know, weight loss, health, cycling, running, etc. The stuff that's going to save you so much time and money. Oh my, I mean, I see so many people making so many mistakes and I'm like, oh man. And I do that every day. I'm helping people all the time. That's why I wrote the ebook. I'm like, get that. Supports me, supports you. It's the ultimate win-win. Um, so yeah, so this morning I wake up and today it's a public holiday here in Australia and I forgot about it. I didn't know. I wake up. It's about six o'clock, and I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's Tuesday. What many people riding today? I was going back to bed. You know, and I had a late night, so I'll get some more, get some more recovery. And then my friend Anna messaged me, and she's like, oh, "You ride today?" And I'm like, "Oh, I might go for a ride later on." And I said, "Many people." She's a heaps out, and I'm like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Oh, it's a public holiday." You know, so I miss that prime time, seven to nine a.m. You know, I miss that, and so I was like, "Oh," you know. But all of a sudden, when I learned there'd be people out there to race and to, you know, have a bit of banter and just, you know, socialize, I was motivated. But before that, I wasn't. I was like, I get more rest. I had a good week of training last week and had a bit of recovery. So, yeah, I generally, I'm a weekend warrior. You know, if it's a public holiday or if it's Saturday or Sunday, I'm out there and have a bit of flex, have a bit of race, have a bit of fun, a bit of banter, and it's good. And that's what, that's that's my routine for the last, you know, 20-something years. A weekend, weekend warrior, weekend racer, whatever you call me. Poser, pretender, pompous, pretentious, weight weenie, whatever you want to call me. Um, so I love that, you know. Um, I love that weekend routine. You know, during the week it's like cruising or whatever. But on Sunday, Sunday, it's like let's, you know, let's pin on that, uh, pin on that number on Strava or at a race or at park run or on the Norton Summit climb or anywhere you go. You pin on a real number or an imaginary number or whatever. But a race is a race. A race is a race. <laughs> um, there's a winner, and then there's second, yeah, first loser. And sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're now. That's just how it is. And I love that. I love that competitive spirit. So for me, what keeps me motivated is racing. If I couldn't race anymore, I'd be like, eh, you know, I'd still use my bike for transport, but I'd be happy let my fitness just to fizzle down. So, yeah, so, but I love racing, man. That's what keeps me motivated. You know, like. It just keeps me motivated to race. Um, I love racing. That's like, you know, so for me, racing, competitiveness. And that comes not for me like, you know, I'm better than you, Harley Jetson, yeah, yeah. That comes from, you know, just that personal challenge. You know, when you're riding at 300 or 400 or 500 watts or trying to surge up at 1,000 watts, 800 watts or whatever, just that personal challenge of what your body's like, no, 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 but it's safe to go, go, go. You know, so just, just that meditation, like I really find that addictive. And I like that. And I find it very easy to do when I'm with other people. For some people, it's Zwift. Um, for some people, it's like oh, 600 milligrams of caffeine or, you know, whatever. Um, but for me, you know, I've done steams, I've done PEDs, I've done, you know, performance enhancing drugs, I've done things like that. And none of them motivate me like the competitive spirit of having fun and banter on the bike. Like, nothing motivates me more than that. Like, you know, and that's why... Guys like Lance Armstrong were so good, they used all the stuff that everyone else used, but Lance had that desire to, you know, to really win and competitive and prove himself. Obviously, in a, you know, maybe a self-destructive way for Lance, you know, an extreme way, but hey, Lance Armstrong, you know. So, and he made the sport what it is today, you know, a, a very popular, popular sport. You know, carbon fiber, Trek, Shimano, Nike, Giro, Oakley, you know, Tour de, the Tour de London wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Lance Armstrong, really. Like, so the Tour de France, 
Lance put on the map globally, even more so. So we, we owe Lance, and Lance a lot. Um, so yeah, that's what keeps me motivated, is the pursuit of personal performance, of helping other people, you know, lose weight, feel great, you know, reduce the environmental burden by using less oil, burning more fat, less oil. That's what he's motivated. So I have a big peer group to train with. I you know, train solo, I train with the crew. I have people message me every day. Let's go right, let's go right. And most of the time I say no. <laughs> but I, and, you know, and I appreciate people asking me to go riding and stuff. But I'm like, generally I'm a morning person. I'm a morning person these days, never used to be, but I wake up, have my water, and then just get in the bike and just boom. You know, I'm a morning person. And if I don't ride in the morning, I generally probably not gonna ride, generally. You know, unless I'm going to go to the shops and stuff like that. But I generally don't ride in the evening, you know, rec recreationally. I might, I'll commute, but I like to wind down. You know, evening's when your testosterone level's dropping down and you're just cruising down, like you're just winding down. The morning's when your testosterone's up, you're like, that's rock and roll. And then over, over the day, your natural cycle of testosterone, you cruise down when you're, obviously when you're on the, on the test, you're just like, you know, flat line all day. But yeah, I like that. Wake up in the morning and just like wind down with the crickets and the birds. You know, so but how to stay motivated? You gotta make sure you have enough carbohydrate. That's so important. The first way to lose motivation is one, dehydration. So you wanna to aim to pee clear every two to three hours. You know, every two to three hours pss, on the bush. Clear. People can dispute that, whatever, don't listen to them. We're talking motivation. All right, hydration, motivation. Hydration is motivation. Primarily way to, primary way to lose motivation. Get dehydrated. When you get dehydrated, you're like, I'm just tired. I'm just, you're more tired than you should be, and, you know, and you're done. The other day, I was watching stage three of the 2021 Tour Down Under. Very hot day, like 42 degrees. I'm riding out. I'm at Meadows. So hot. It's so dry. I'm just like, oh, man. I was, I'm going to have to lay down. I ran out, sort of semi ran out of water, but I was near a gas station. So I was watching the women's race on my phone there, and then it went. I was like, oh, man. Can I even be asked going to Wollonga? No, dude, that's your job. You got to film today. You want to be there. You know, you, if you're there, you'll, be, you'll enjoy it. I was like, yeah, I guess. And so then I just went to the servo. I got two and a half liters of water. Got myself a can of orange sweet drink soda, and then just knocked them all back. And then all of a sudden, poof, I'm back on the go again. You know, that hydration went up, motivation started to cool down. I'm just like, let's go. I was charging, you know, charging down to uh, having a great time riding down Wollonga, just by myself cruising along. So motivation was like, oh, I want to do this because my body's like deep, getting dry. It's like, what are you doing? This is really hot. This is dangerous. You know, people die right out there in the heat. So before you die, your body says, don't do this. But if you hydrate, your body's like, let's go do this. You know, and so hydration is number one. Right. Second biggest thing for motivation is you carbohydrate, your muscle glycogen partitioning. Right, having that nutrition, aka carbohydrates, in is very important. If you're Muscle glycogen is low, your motivation is <clears throat> you know, I eat heaps of carbs, I eat heaps of carbs. It's not about eating heaps of carbs, it's about eating enough carbs. Uh, it's not about enough, uh, uh, a lot. I, I mean, like, eating a lot. No, no, it doesn't matter, dude, do that. It's eating enough. Right? You want to have enough carbohydrates. Enough. How much do you need? Enough. Enough. I remember Doug Grant told me that back in the day. I was like, that's a great way to explain it, isn't it? Enough. How much do you need? Enough. Right? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> how much sex do you need? Enough. Um, how much sleep do you need? Enough. But to put a number on it, uh, as a guide, you at least 10 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight per day. So if you're like me, I'm about 70, 60 kilos, 80 kilos, whatever, I'm going to be having 60 to 600 to 700 to 800 grams of carbs every single day. And if I have less than that, because I'm busy, I got caught up, or whatever. I notice the next day my motivation is a bit like, mm, you know. And then the second day of not enough carbohydrate, your motivation is really starting to like, bzz. and that's why you see people who cut the carbs: coffee, coffee, Ritalin, Adderall, Dextra, you know, Dexamphetamines, all this stuff. And then eventually the motivation goes up, and then poof, crash, cortisol smashing down, testosterone flatline, and even if they're using anabolics, they just they have all these mental health issues going on. And, and just because you not enough carbohydrate and your body's just like fighting it's like and then you're fighting yourself and it's just like it's not a good place to be people 
get enough carbs every single day or your life quality goes downhill, all right? This is like, this drives me crazy. I see it in the vegan community, the vegetarian, the sand, the raw food, whoever, keto. People just not enough carbohydrates. They're scared of sugar. They're scared of rice. They're scared of fruit. Or maybe they're not scared of any of them, but they just don't know how to get enough because maybe they're scared of getting judged because they're eating enough. Man, it's your life, all right? Don't miss out on life because you're undercarbed, all right? It's, I've been there myself. Don't don't go there, you know? Increase your carbs. as much carbs as you want. Fruit for breakfast. For me, I love fruit. Tin fruit, fresh fruit, frozen fruit, dried fruit. Sweet and juicy for breakfast. It's light. As much as I want. Lunch, generally the same in summertime. If not, I have some sort of rice dish, especially for dinner. Rice. You know, things like that. But in my ebooks, I talk exactly what diet I recommend for the best results. Um, is that going to my head? There is a, another way of losing motivation. Sleep. Like one of the biggest tips out there. We've got sleep, water, sugar. All right, sleep, water, sugar. Sleep's the third one. Like if you go to bed at 9, 8, 9 p.m., man, your motivation next day. And if you do that for a week, 8, 9 p.m. bedtimes, bam. You know, get off your phone, just lay there, relax. You know, maybe listen to an audiobook if you want, but just no blue lights. It's going to wake you up, all right? It's going to affect your testosterone levels. And if your testosterone is low, motivation generally is probably going to be low. It's going to be lower. Let's go. It's going to be lower. Because um, I've experimented, you know, with natural testosterone levels. I've experimented with almost zero testosterone levels from doing certain compounds that just shut down your HPG axis. And I've experimented with quite high levels of testosterone. And I've been motivated at all different levels. All right? The best motivation, though, is having a purpose, a routine, an identity, something that we can look forward to. Fun, all right? Fun's the main thing, because you that's the main one. And so for me, going out there, smashing riders, or getting smashed <laughs> on the bike, for me, that's fun either way. Yeah, I love it when someone beats me. I love it when someone beats me. And I love when I beat other people. You know, it's like, I'm not afraid to lose, and I like to win. You know, so it's, it's like the best of the best. If there's people, plenty of people out there who are afraid to lose, so they never try. And it's like, what are you doing, man? Like, why be so insecure? So that's a big tip of why I'm so fit at age 43, coming on 44, is I'm not afraid to lose. I like losing and I like winning. I'm not afraid of either. You know, I prefer if I do win, but you know, you can't win everything. And uh, unless you ride with riders who you're way better than, then you know, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel very satisfying. Um, you should flog them all the time. So yeah, for me, I really enjoy it when you know riders can beat me up a climb. Not Norton Summit. When I get dropped at Norton Summit, I, I I enjoy that. I really enjoy that. Um, it doesn't feel good in the moment, but afterwards you're like, yeah, that was good. It's just good having someone to really push me that I can't hold the wheel. And I'm like, oh man, could, could I hold it a little bit? It's just sure challenging like that. And so I really, really relish it. And that's why I live in Adelaide, and that's why. I live at the Blades of Norton Summit. It's not my favourite climb. You know, it's pretty fast. It's not my sort of forte. I prefer steep climbs, but Norton Summit is very, very social, and I enjoy that aspect. So that's why I live East Suburbs of Adelaide. If Ad, if they didn't exist, I wouldn't live in Adelaide. I would live if Adelaide was flat. I wouldn't live here. I would live in Thailand. I live in Thailand or Malaysia or Vietnam. I wouldn't live in Australia. You know, as much as I love having an Australian passport, I'm grateful for it. I wouldn't live in Australia if um, I wasn't in the cycling. Why would I? I would live in Asia? I, I, if Adam didn't exist, I'd, I'd live over there. So this person's looking south of California, San Diego. I mean, so, great places to ride around there as well. Great places to ride. So that's that's my motivation tips. I'm age 43. I've got personal experience, long time. You know, I've used a host of compounds. You know, so I can speak. What's this phone doing? It's my cutout. Hang on, wait a second. Wait a second. What's going on here? So, man, I still want to delete some stuff. I hope you can appreciate my transparency. I hope you can appreciate my level of authenticity, my integrity, my desire to help people by being totally transparent what I've done or what I haven't done. And so I can be just real with that. And I know a lot of people out there who appreciate realness, appreciate it. And a lot of people out there go, oh my God, dude, I need these trunks. I can't go unsubscribe. I'm going to follow Cookie Man. But so a lot of people out there you know, use stuff and they lie about it. And Various reasons. If you're an Olympic level athlete, you can't say, hey, yeah, I take too much. <laughs> like, you're going to lose everything. But if you're a YouTuber and you're like, you know, I mean, yeah, anyway, I'm just going to talk about what I do. And 
a lot of people use drugs. Uh, and so with motivation, if you're relying on drugs for motivation, that won't last. It will not last. It will not last. There's no drug in the world that will keep you motivated all the time. There isn't. There is not. There is not at all. Right? And even with drugs, even though they can feel really, 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 really good, and they can improve your health, the motivation, the best way to feel good is it's coming from you. you know, like, I want to go out and I want to help people. I want to test myself on the bike. You know? I want to introduce people to, to pain on, on the bicycle and, and overcoming that mentally and stuff like that. That's for me, that's the motivation. So if I ever take anything, that just enhances that experience. Right? But if you don't have that fundamental foundation of internal intrinsic motivation, any external stuff used for motivation, it won't last. It will just it blow out of the wind. You've got to have that cement foundation of like, I enjoy doing this. Right? I enjoy doing this. And if I take a bit of music, or if I take a bit of stims, or if I take a bit of hormones, or whatever, this is going to enhance that. But you're going to have that desire, you know, I like riding my bike for whatever reason, just because I can. And that's your foundation. That's why you see a lot of pro cyclists actually hate their job. They hate being a pro cyclist. That's true. A lot of people will disagree with that, but that's the truth. A lot of pro riders in the world tour today hate their job. They can't wait to quit and do something, just relax. But that's what they got to do because they got some money, they got kids, they got mortgage, they got wife and all that stuff, and they got social pressure, family pressure. But they look forward to that where they can retire and just never ride a bike ever again. Yeah. That's that's reality for a lot of pros out there and runners and swimmers and all sorts. They're just like, I'm done, I'm done, no more. Um, and so that would be sad that reality, you know. <laughs> if I couldn't ride my bike, I'd be I'd be pretty disappointed. So because I love riding my bike, you know, every day, no. Every single mile, no. There's times where I'm like, oh, but it's generally because I hadn't had enough sleep water sugar. Or I'm not being gratitude, you know, based in the moment. So you, you mean like nothing's ever perfect, but if you're relying on other people to be motivated or YouTube influencers to be motivated or whatever, they ain't gonna last me. They ain't gonna last. You have to motivate yourself and then you use a couple of percent here and there, external factors to really bring you up. All right? All right? So you want to, maybe you're at 96% motivation and you use a few percent just to bring up to that 100%. But if you're down here at 10% motivation and you think using drugs or whatever's going to bring you up to 90% and hold you there, it's not going to. It's never going to. You, you'll eventually just be like, oh, I don't like this. Right? And I've seen so many people come and go. I've seen some of the most talented athletes in the world come and go. Like, I've seen absolute mutants on the bike. And I'm a person who's always looking at runners and cyclists and who I ride with. I've seen some freakazoids out there, some natural talent. And, and a lot of them just burn out. You know, just, they don't ride anymore. They just they get fat or they just get into bodybuilding or they just quit or they just get into drugs and party scene. They just, they're done. Right? They're done. They're just over it because they, in that amazing talent, they didn't have that motivation foundation. You know, it's more just they did because of their parents want to do, or they maybe their ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend, or them or whatever. You know, or maybe they want to escape poverty or whatever. So, they, you know, but your motivation for me, I like being fit. I like helping other people. I like playing chasey on the bike. I love it. You know, I like it, especially one, at least once or twice a week playing chasey on the bike. I don't know, chasey was my favorite thing to do at school, <laughs> and um, and for me, that's what bike racing is, just chasey. And so, you know, that's why you won't see me, that's why you won't ever see me taking risks on the downhill because the chance of crashing outweighs the reward of being able to go again tomorrow and not and play chase or whatever. Like, you know, like why would I play chase in the downhill, risk my safety, use other people's safety? It's no no no. It's too much to lose there. So I value my health and that's why I don't take risks like that. That's why I laugh when people say, you know, oh, you use steroids or whatever. And it's like, they're very, very safe in low dosages. I'm not saying you should do them, but I'm like, you know what's dangerous? Riding downhill, you know, riding downhill where a dog could run out and it's game over for you. Or a kangaroo could jump out right now, it's game over for you. What you know what's dangerous is riding a fork that you don't check regularly. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> you know, like, these people are like, nah, 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 nah. It's like, the dude, you take some crazy risks you don't even know about. And for what risk, for what benefit, you know what I mean? So I'm always analyzing things. I like to get the best and feel the best and help other people experience the same. Hence why I write those eBooks. Just totally transparent, put it out there. Get my critics, I get it. It's part of the territory. Um, if you're gonna be real, you're gonna get people who hate real. Because <laughs> it reflects that they're full of shit. Or they, it, 
insecure to be really honest about what they do. I get it. No hate to them. Um, so that's the deal there. Just want to be totally transparent. Uh, motivation's got to come within. You can use all the drugs and music and banter and, you know, some people start drama just to be motivated, you know. And those people don't last in the sport. They just do not last. Right? So you've got to enjoy what you got. Right? And sleep water sugar helps so much. Having the bike fit, having the good shoes and the saddle you love to use and in an environment where it's good and maybe put a little mirror on your bar. Just things like that that, you know, make your experience more enjoyable. And that's motivation. It's like, it's fun. Make cycling fun and you'll take care of motivation. To make something fun, have less rules, right? Some people got so many rules and they're so rigid. Oh, I've got a little stain on my, on my map jersey. Oh. <laughs> you know, just chill. Less rules. Have rules for safety and you're going to be seen on the bike. You've got to pay attention on the bike. But have less rules about how to perform, right? Always give your best. Yeah, and sometimes your best is really good. Sometimes your best is not so good. But always give your best when you're out there. Um, when the universe presents you with a, a fellow rider to race in a safe manner, then mate, I, I, that's that's how that's how I roll. If I got North Summit and there's no fast riders go past me, I ride at 100 watts. And if someone goes past me 800 watts, I match it 800 watts, and I'll keep doing that until I blow. If no one comes out, I'm just riding 100 watts. But you know, if, so that's just, that's how the universe, that's how I ride with the universe. And that's fun that way, never knowing. Whether some team's gonna come flying past, or someone's going, hey, let's do another lap. And I'm like, oh, universe said, do another lap. Yeah, that's why I'm always carved up, always hydrated. Uh, to my best ability. Hopefully that helps motivation. Gotta come from within. Make something fun in life and you take care of motivation. Why is it not fun? It's because your rules are a bit silly. Your rules are a bit stiff, a bit pompous. Are you getting enough sleep water sugar? Uh, have you crashed your hormones because you're using too much caffeine, etc.? Are you feeling melancholy because of caffeine? A lot of people out there are very caffeine sensitive. I rarely use caffeine. I find it's like caffeine and theobromine. Next day I feel a little bit, eh, a little bit blue. Yeah. Not all, all the time, but a lot of the times. That's why I very rarely use caffeine. Um, I find music is the best stimulant for sure. Music and fun and having sleep, water, sugar. That's the real deal. Let me know if you found it helpful. I'll see you next video. And check out the Dune Rider podcast. Just type in Dune Rider into any podcast. We'll all heaps of stuff there. Questions down below.